Hello, we are from Group 7 and we are here to present our project and this is all the members and I uh, ask for the problem, this is our problem statement and as for the parameters, we have a maximum torque of 514 Nm and a current of maximum current of 300 amps and a maximum speed of 1806 rpm and the supply voltage of 324. We are here to design a radio flux permanent magnet motor with a torque output and a current with a top speed, the maximum current density of 10 amp millimeter square for the copper wire. As for our magnet, we chose this bar, eight of these bar magnets to form one ring octagon shape. Uh, because of this long magnet, only one ring is possible, so we do not need multiple rings. The dimension of the magnet is 0 0.1016 meter times 0 0.0254 meter times 0 0.00635 meter thick. As for the, the BR max, it is 13,200 goals, and uh, that's all for the magnet. And as for our wires, we chose the 12.5 AWG copper wire with a diameter of 1.9544 millimeter. We'll be using this 10 parallel of this wire. As for the reason why we continue, as for the reason why we combine it with, it will form a cross-sectional area of 30 millimeter square. And the bigger 12.5 AWG wire will be used as our coil. And as for, as for the motor controller, the reason why we chose this specific motor controller is because our max current was a 300 amps and this controller produced around 100 amps to 400 amps. Okay, now we proceed to the motor design. For the motor design, we use a CAD software that is called MotoCAD. In this software, we can see that there are a few colors represent each part of the motor. For this view, this view represents the radial view of the motor. For the color of green, we can see that the green represents the magnet and the blue color represents the lamination around the magnet. While the copper coil is represented by yellow color, we can see that we have 12 slot number for the coil. The red color represents the stator lamination and the blue color represents the housing. Next is the motor axial wheel. For this axial wheel, the color is the same part as the radial view. But as we can see on the left side, we have the flange as the mounting, uh, represent the color in dark blue. And for the yellow here, it is represent as the end cap or front cap of the winding coil. Next is the three-dimensional view of the motor. So the first one is the normal three-dimensional motor, which we can see the, the coil and the magnet. While the second one is the three-dimensional motor with end winding. You can see that coil is uh, covered with the end binding of the copper. And lastly, is the three-dimensional motor with end cap. What we see basically in normal life, where the motor is covered with end cap. My name is Lofi Hasif, and I'll be explaining about the calculation of our motor design. Given that our parameter is maximum torque 514 meter, and our maximum current 300 amps, as well as our maximum 1,806 RPM, as well as our supply voltage 324 volts. First, the KT constant, which is torque divided by the maximum current. So we got the value of KT 1.7133 Newton meter per amps. And then find the value for KE constant. We have to divide the supply voltage of our perimeter divided by the maximum speed of our perimeter. So then we got our initial KE value as 0 0.179 voltage per RPM. But then in order to help us with further calculation, we convert the RPM into rad per second. So we will be multiplying our maximum speed by 2 pi over 60 to get the rad per second value. So our value will be 189.124 rad per second. Basically, uh, if we uh, divide 324 voltage by the 189.124 rad per second, we will get a different value of KE. E, which is in terms of voltage per rad per second. So it, the value of Ke that we will be using is 1.7132 volts per rad per second. As we know that Kd, Kp, Ks, Nspp, and Nph is a constant. So Kd is equal to 1, Kp is equal to 0 0.8333, Ks is 0 0.3333, Nspp is 1, Nph is 3. We can help calculate the number of turns in the coil by using these values. So first, we use the bar magnet mentioned by Hazik. We will be using this long bar of magnet with uh, four inches, one in four inches long, one inches uh, width, and one over four, which is 0 
inches thick uh, bar magnet with the magnetic strength of 13,200 angles. And we will be using eight of this permanent magnet to form an octagon shape that will be spinning. So one inch converts to meter is 0 0.0254 meter. And then in order to obtain the inner radius of our rotor, we will given this formula S over 210, 180 divided by the number of sides of magnet we use. So then, as you can see in this calculation here, 0 0.0254 in meter is then divided by 2 tangent 180 divided by 8 sides and we get 0 0.0307 meter. So that will be our inner radius of our rotor. And then as we convert magnet thickness to 1 over 4 inch, we will get 0 0.00635 meter. After that, in order to obtain our radius of the whole rotor, we will add the inner radius that we calculated earlier with our thickness of our magnet. So calculation will be 0 0.0307 meter plus 0 0.00635 meter which will be 0 0.03705 meter. That will be our radius of our rotor. So then the length of our rotor, which will be the length of our motor as well for the inside the case, will be four inches. So then we will, since we are using only one ring of the permanent magnet, so we will be using only one stack of bar of magnet. So then the length of the rotor will be 0 0.1016 meter. And then we know the magnetic flux or the strength of the magnet is 13,200 gauss. Then we convert this gauss into Tesla, divide it by 10 to the power of 4, then we will get 1.32 Tesla, which is the magnet strength. On the next calculation, in order, in order to obtain the number of turns for each coil, we will be using two formula. On this right side here, there is formula 1 and formula 2. So formula 1 is EMF divided by rep per second equal to newton meter times kd times kp times ro times l times bg and then ns we want to multiply by ns which we want to find and also nph which is number of phase and then the second formula we'll be using top per phase formula which is top per phase divided by three since we're using three phase mode so then per phase over three is equal to number of magnet and m times kd times kp times ks times uh, nspp times ro which is the uh, rotor radius times length and times uh, strength of the magnet and then times ns which we want to find the number of turns of coil and then we also multiply by the current per phase on the right side here we use the using the first formula we obtain that emf per rad per second is also our value ke so what we did was 1.7132 divided by 8 magnet which we use times the constant 1 times the constant 0 0.333 times the constant 0 0.8333 times 1 times 0 0.03 Zero, uh, 0 0.03705 meter length of the motor times the radius of the rotor and multiply by the length of the motor which is 0 0.1016 meter times by the magnetic strength which is 1.32 tesla and times by 3. So then we get 51.7 turns of foil. And then on the left side is we're using the second formula. So basically on the second formula, we use the top per phase formula. And then we calculated using the 514 newton, newton per meter top per phase. And then we basically divide it by 3 times 8. 3 because we divide by 3 is because there's 3 phase. And then we multiply again by the length and this constant uh, and values that we obtain. And we also get 51.72 turns. So this shows that our first formula and the second formula have the same outcome meaning that our number of coil and turn match the parameters that we needed okay so now we go to current density we know that current density is 10 amps per millimeter square so then in order to obtain the cross-sectional area we divided max current divided by the current density which is uh, in our case max current is 300 amps divided by 10 amps millimeter square which is 30 millimeter square so our cross-sectional area needed is 30 millimeter square so if we assume that the air gap is one millimeter so then the radius in stator is the uh, radius of rotor plus the air gap so then it will be 0 0.03805 meter the arc length for the the stator of our coil will be circumference over number of coil then uh, basically the circumference we calculated based on the radius of stator earlier we calculated and we got 0 0.2391 meter over uh, 12 number of coils because we're using 4 north and 4 south so we'll be using 12 our arc length of each coil will be 0 0.019925 meter. From here, we can determine the degrees angle, which is 360 degree to make a full circle divided by the coil, which is 12. So then each angle 
of each core will be 30 degree. Assuming that all cores is filled with wire, we use the AWG 12.5 copper wire with diameter of 1.9544 millimeter and the radius of 0.9772 millimeter. From here, we can calculate the cross-sectional area, which is pi r square because the wire is circular, and we get three millimeter square cross-sectional area. This is for one of the AWG 12.5 copper wire. Since we needed 30 millimeter square of cross-sectional area in order to pass through 10 amps per millimeter square current density, we will be using 10 of this parallel AWG 12.5 copper wire in parallel. From there, we can divide the number of turns in the coil, okay, by 10 so that we can obtain for each AWG 12.5 wire copper, it will have a 5.172 turns for each of this AWG. So if you put 10 of this AWG 12.5 copper wire in parallel, it will form a 51.72 turns of coil. Okay, so then from here and out, we can calculate the slot depth for each coil per section. So the diameter of the wire, which is 1.9544 millimeter, we multiply it by the number of turns of each the small coil. So then we will get 10.11 millimeter as our slot depth for this coil section. My name is Mohamad Fidurin and I'll be talking about our resistance per phase. Okay, so in order to find our equivalent resistance, we need these four elements, which is our coil length, number of turns, area of parallel, total length per winding, and copper resistivity and resistance per winding. So to find our coil length, we need to input our length of rotor, number of rings, and our arc of length. So the calculation is by length of rotor times by our number of ring, which is 1, and times by 2, plus with our arc length times by 1.5 times 2. So we got 0.263 meter, our coil length. So as we can say, our number of turns of the coil is 51.72 turns. And for our area of parallel, A of parallel, I wrote that. So the formula to find the area of parallel is by calculating our AWG 12.5 wire diameter times by our 10 wires in parallel. Our wires in parallel is 10, which is 10, and our AWG 12.5 per wire diameter is, uh, is 3. So we got 30 millimeters square. And our total length per winding, the calculation is by timing the coil of length with, uh, with the number of turns. And we got 13.6 13, 13 meter. And the copper resistivity is constant, it's fixed which is 0 0.0171 ohm millimeter square per meter. And the resistance per winding, the calculation is copper resistivity times by total length per winding divided by our area of parallel and we got 7.753 times 10 to the power of negative 3 ohm, negative 3 ohm. And then we got our resistance per phase, our equivalent resistance, which is the formula is number of coil divided by 3 times stem per winding plus number of coil divided by 3 again times resistance per winding divided by 2 and we got 0 0.046518 ohm. From our equivalent resistance, we can find our max stop at the speed of 0, calculate by voltage times kT times our equivalent resistance, and we got 11,933.21. And at top 0, we can find our max speed, which is uh, 1,806 RPM. Okay, so here is our summary for our motor specification. So uh, you can look at it. For a while. Next is our, this is the Excel table for making our graph. And here's the top. We use uh, the increment of 129 to find our RPM. So 0 plus 129, uh, we got 129, 129 plus two, uh, 129 again, we got 258 uh, until 1806. So here is our increment. And lastly, here is our graph. So on the left side is our max RPM versus our max top. You can see that as the top is going down, the speed of the RPM increases. So we can say that the, the R, if we increase the number of our speed in RPM, the number of top go down, which decrease. And on the right side of our graph is RPM versus power. So as the speed of the RPM increases, the power also increases. So we can see that when it reaches at 90,000 at the power, it goes down because our top and M, uh, the our top limit is zero, and our value of top is also zero. So that's why we got zero. We slow down when the power reaches peak at one thousand power, and it goes down when it reaches at one thousand eight hundred. For conclusion, we are able to design a radial flux permanent magnet with five hundred fifteen maximum top at maximum current three hundred ampere when at a top speed of 
1806 rpm and the maximum current density of the wi copper wire is 10 ampere per millimeter square that's all from us thank you